to Sharon is good afternoon. The rest of you, I believe, is still morning, right? Uh, welcome to this event, which is called the Sneak Peek Preview for Directive Communication Psychology Practitioner Professional Certification. I'm going to run through with you. It'll take roughly, you know, uh, within uh, an hour plus, and I hope to complete this, uh, you know, uh, within one and a half hours, yeah? right? So I don't want to take too much of your time too. Now, let me give you a, or before that, right, can I hear from you what makes you sign up for this uh, session? What is the thing, you know, that attracts you, that you want to come? You know, that would be something I'd like to hear. Since this is a small group, uh, you know, we can have more interaction, personal interaction. I don't mind. Anyone at all would like to uh, yeah, speak? Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, yeah. Basically, I wanted to find out more about this because it, in a way, it helps me in my coaching and uh, training. So mm -hmm. I should to better myself in my coaching and training when I do it. Okay, thank you, Shamini. Anyone else? Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to share? Uh, Pop, since yeah. you are... Or, or Cheryl, you would like to speak? Yeah, uh, may I? Okay, go ahead. Anu? Yeah. Uh, for me also it is the same because I am a life coach too. So this would help me, you know, um, in my coaching sessions. That's why okay, I was, coaching I too. Working for that, yeah. Okay, good. Coaching. Perfect. Uh, Cheryl and Pop, who would like to go first? Uh, <coughs> for me, I uh, just surprised with the uh, the color brand because I, I never heard it before. And mm -hmm. when saw the the link the same and i said i i feel that uh, interesting especially about uh communication you know which i think that can help me to understand my college or my boss more hopefully so that's why i i come to that uh, this sneak peek to understand more about this okay pop what do you do you don't mind to share uh i'm, I'm the uh, manager the training manager in uh, my company yeah Oh, you're a training manager. Fantastic. And what area do you train? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, what we call telecommunication. Yeah. Telecommunication. Oh, you train in telecommunication. Yes. Uh, more on product? Uh, that uh, product is mostly on product. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Cheryl, how about you? Uh, sorry. I, yep, I've already, okay. I think I've already signed up for the uh, the course itself. Um, I think I've done the, the, signed up for the DC practitioner and the culture consultant course. And I wanted to see, is this the same as that? Are they different? How does it all fit in together? And what, if anything, what's the best way to go? Oh, I see. Okay, that means you have signed it under Arthur Kamazi. Okay, uh, the DC practitioner, the one that you bought, are mainly videos training. Yes. It's a yes. self-learn, yes. self-learn, right? Whereas this one, uh, I'm here to guide. I'm here right. to give you my time, right? So it is a, you know, interactive learning. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And the cultural consultant, basically, if you are into organizational culture, uh yeah. right so that's that's where you know uh dc have the the methodology a very unique methodology uh for organizational culture yeah, yeah? and uh anyone can sign up i mean even though you are non-dc as a star but eventually mm -hmm. it'll be more useful and helpful if you also you know uh be certified in our dc because yes. the whole thing is about psychology and how do you understand behaviors. I will share a bit more with you since you know you are coming from that route. I will share a little bit more and, and explain that to you. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So uh, let's move on. Uh, thank you, everybody, for sharing. Uh, let's move on.
Okay, let's move on now. Just to show you, this is a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Lily Lau. In fact, I am the pioneer to bring DC or colored brain to Malaysia. And I'm one of the very, very early batch of Arthur Kamazi when he started this. So I learned uh, and I was certified in 2005. That was like 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so I got my master's certification from him in 2012. So ever since I have been conducting uh, train the trainer certification and I've been certifying people uh, who are interested to join us to be part of the uh, team, right? So I've been doing this quite a fair bit and uh, this uh, uh, I call it professional practitioner. It is a unique product which I kind of like created with permission from Arthur because I saw the needs, you know, there are a lot of uh, non-trainers, uh, people who are coaches, people who are lecturers, people who are, you know, dealing with uh, in, in counseling and all that, right? Uh, they are not the, the trainers. And yet, right, if you are equipped with all this information and knowledge about uh, directive communication psychology, it can really help you in your career and in your professionalism. That was what I realized and I designed this program. Yeah. So with the view that, you know, uh, I can help more people, right, who are from other industries as well. Right. So just to give you uh, a little bit. Uh, okay. Hang on. Uh, let me just. Uh, right. And of course, right. Uh, I have my own company. And uh, which is called Culture Dynamics, DCI Malaysia Syndrome, Syndrome Berhad. We are also, uh, our, as a company, we are uh, certified as a partner. Yeah. And of course, latest is that I'm also a virtual learn caster trainer. Then I, that's where I can do training online. And uh, Cheryl, this is the uh, culture change certification, right? You can go through this and then, you know, learn the unique method. Uh, you know, later on, you know, after this, if you have any questions, by all means, you can con uh, connect with me. Yeah. Okay. And uh, our program, DC, is, uh, uh, is uh, acknowledged and accepted under Global Trainers Federation. So, you know, and our programs are endorsed by that. So all this will give credibility if you are eventually certified by us. Right. Of course, the rest of it, uh, I'm a member of AIOBP. Uh, certified professional member. AIOBB stands for American Institute of Business Psychology. Uh, in Malaysia, you know, for any trainers, you need to be certified under our government, the Human Resources Development Fund Malaysia. And uh, I'm also a certified professional, uh, professional trainer under IPMA. And uh, as uh, in NLP, I'm a practitioner, right? So that will give you a strings of my uh, credentials. Okay, more or less, we have gone through this and I have an overview of who you are. Uh, I think we are okay in all this, in this area, right? So let's move on. Let's move on. Now, do you agree with me that, you know, competency alone is not enough? Do you agree with me? Can you type, you know, uh, yes? Yes. Yeah? Okay, yes. Just, just give it a shout, no problem. Right. Uh, unfortunately, in companies, a lot of people or companies, they still measure, or which is very important that they do measure people based on competencies, which I think they are not wrong, but neither are they entirely correct. Yeah, uh, Competency is important, but the other aspect, which is what? Attitude? Do you agree with me? Attitude, yes. Yes. passion, Right, and these are not easily measurable. Right, competencies, I think, you know, now it is quite developed. People have developed how to measure competencies in many ways. And there are lots of instruments in the market, which I, you know, that I think to a certain extent you can gauge. Right, so now we are looking at the other aspect. You know, I, I look at competencies as a hardware, more on the hard side. Whereas, you know, your passion, your attitude, those are the software, you know, uh, which is more implicit. And how do we get it, you know? And, and that is the most difficult uh, area, right? In, in today's uh, uh, people, 
in in working for them to work right hang on now okay come let's move on just share with me have you come across right situation like you know why do competent people become underachievers have you met people like that suddenly right their motivation level goes down they are not performing and if you agree with me people of that kind uh yes cheryl you are correct it is about motivation the competency level is still there but it's just that this person who is supposed to be competent somehow cannot perform isn't this very sad right now for companies for companies uh, you, you, you cannot, you know, based on the company concept, you know, where people need to produce, where people talk about productivity, it's just like a factory, right? Uh, to a certain extent, it is also input, then once you have input, you should also have output. But here, we are talking about input, but that output does not come out as the way we want it to be, right? And all these are human related. Yeah, so this is what we would like to go in more to understand and how or what we can do to improve the situation, right? So the other question is how to uncover hidden talents in your team. Do you believe that the team, for example, Pop, you are working, right? Uh, you, do, do you have a team of people working under you? Can I hear from you, Pop? Hello, Pop, are you there? Can I hear from you? Okay, you have 15 people, that's a huge group. Questions, have, do you agree that you know, there are hidden talents in your team and yet you are not maximizing the talents in them? Yes? Uh, in, in some way, in some way. Yeah. Some, <laughs> not more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now mind, right? In general, this does happen quite often, huh? right? Yeah. And last question, how to create a team that is motivated? Okay, so this is a question I think, you know, uh, a lot of people would like to, somehow they know it, but yet it's like, you know, they, a lot of people, nowadays a lot of people do know what, how to do, what to do. No, I should say a lot of people know what to do, right? But yet the, output or the results that they whatever that they have done may not be so satisfactory yeah so this is where i would like to dwell in further uh with the view that i'm able to help more right now this question applies to everyone for a lot of us are, are freelance but nevertheless right uh let's hear from you are you the same person at home and at work anyone would like to answer that yes no can you no. type yes and no yeah. Okay, Cheryl says yes. Shamini says no. Pop says no. You see? Uh, this is quite a straightforward trend that I see because Shamini, you have a full-time job. Am I right? Right? So yes. a lot of people who have a full-time job most of them, not all, uh, most of them in my experience, when I ask them this question, would answer me no. And most uh, self-employed, most self-employed would answer me yes, right? Because they're working for themselves, huh? yeah? And uh, let me share this with you. Uh, I, I, I have a story to share later on. I was working for 18 years for somebody, yeah, right? And, and I, my answer was no also at that point of time. But now I'm working for myself, my answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, so what we uh, thrive, uh, strive to do in directive communication psychology, right, is to understand why. The question here is why. There is no wrong or right answer here, right? You know, this, because this is literally you, right? You, you, you know, whether you are the same or you are not the same, right? The question here is why and how come, especially those who answered no, how come you have a change in behaviors? Yeah, that would be the key question to look at. How come you have a change behavior, right? Cheryl wrote that uh, you need to fit into the work environment. Correct, correct. 
And in DC, I call it DC, uh, DC stands for directive communication, uh, right? And in DC, what we delve in, delve in is to understand more about your environment, okay? Uh, people also, and people forms the environment. Are we okay? People forms the environment. In fact, without people, you know, the environment is, is, is just a, a, a static, right? It is the people that forms the environment and the people that you are with. Automat automatically, we know how to act and react based on circumstances, right? You, we do not need to be taught. We do not need to be taught automatically, right? We just know how to uh, uh, change the behavior, right? Now, uh, uh, a question, a classic question, sir. Uh, for example, if the bosses are not in the office in general, do you think the staff will be more ease off, will be more relaxed because there is no one watching them? In yes. general, what do you think the answer is? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, right? In general, that will be that, that kind of answer, right? Because bosses is, is not around, right? You are more relaxed, it's true, right? Fab say it's more relaxed, yeah? If bosses is around, what happened to you? You have to show your serious side, right? That you are working and you keep quiet, yeah? So, you know, do we need to be taught how to do that? Yes, uh, Shamini says tension, yeah? Bosses around more tense, so you need to work, eh? right? You cannot be, you know, sharing jokes and all that, right? So this is uh, the psychology we want to delve in why? Because is it all about your bosses that give you the tension or you yourself are reacting to it as well? So in DC, right, this is what we help you to understand about your environment. Okay. Let me... Right. So let me share with you my story. How I uncover my hidden talent. I worked for Price Waterhouse Coopers for 18 years. Yeah. Uh, anyone here who, 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 I mean, who is from the financial background? Uh, just to share with you, I'm not an accountant by profession. Neither am I any, neither uh, I have any finance background. But I was recruited to join PwC uh, almost after my graduation. Why? Okay, just to share with you, uh, I graduated from Japan actually, and at that point of time, uh, PwC in Malaysia was looking to build the Japanese business. They got a CPA from Japan to head this department, and they are looking for teams who can speak Japanese. Somehow I was uh, connected. Uh, well, in those times, right, uh, somehow, you know, there was some connection there. And uh, I went in for an interview. Yes, they recruited me. Yeah? So it's just for that pure reasons, you know, I speak Japanese language. I don't have any finance background, accounting background. I even dropped my account subject when in my high, in my form six in Malaysia, we call it form six. Okay. So whatever it is, I started working and me being a fresh, wow, right? In general, I was like, you know, I have so much uh, dreams. I want to do so many things. And I was uh, happy for at least the first five to seven years in my career in PwC. I should say I was happy. I learned a lot. And that was my, my learning ground also. How come, right? Now, as a person, my emotional needs at that point of time. Now, now I can share all this with you uh, because I'm already trained and I know what I wanted. But during those times, I don't know what really all these are, right? My psychology, my emotional needs, I didn't understand all that and I don't have all those information. But I was uh, happy in my work. Why? Because the job was challenging. I can tell you, I work even seven days a week nonstop, right? It was very challenging. And uh, it, uh, it, it was very achievement driven, right? Uh, when I get to complete a project, when I assisted a project, uh, 
uh, it was my achievement. Yeah, and I needed diversity. Right now, what was the diversity? I get to meet clients from various industries. So that helped me to learn a lot, open up my mind, uh, you know, to almost every industry that I can think of, from finance to manufacturing to trading to education, right? Which I didn't, I didn't have all this, you know, knowledge. But because of the clients uh, that I that I took care. Well, from all these industries, every job was a challenge and it was, you know, something new to learn. And that kept me going. And I was happy and I learned, but it is tough work, tough work. And I worked, you know, there were times that continue seven days, you know, because there's so, so much to do, so much preparation. I have to take uh, files back or there were times that on a Sunday, I even have to go to the office. Anyway. Right. So after that, you know, uh, that happens to about five, seven years. I was okay. Then, you know, work continues. I was promoted some and later on I got married. Yeah. And I started to have uh, children as well. What happened to me? Okay. At that point of time, there were emotional changes in me, right? From someone who was uh, high achievement driven, high challenge, I need to slow down because I, or I have a family, right? And the need for security came in. So uh, I, I, I don't like to have so much all this overtime stuff anymore, right? But somehow work was still there. So what happened to me? I felt tired. I, I felt even unmotivated. I felt like, you know, so exhaustive, you know, in doing all this unending work because I wanted to spend more time at home. And that became, became a, a challenge, you know, to how to balance work and, and family. So, and again, right, I went through all this without knowing all these uh, emotional needs and the psychological needs of me, right? Uh, so it went on. And at that point of time, my performance was in a plateau. I was no longer performing, but to ensure that I do not underperform, I just fulfilled the basic requirement. There were KPIs given. I ensured that, you know, I just meet basic, right? So those were the times in that moments of my life, right? Uh, and, and it just went on for a few, for, for like, you know, five to seven years again, right? Then my, my daughter and son started to grow a little bit older and they were, you know, things were more stable in my life. And, right, what happened to me again? my need for challenges came back. My need, you know, to be more achievement driven came back. And I was thinking, wow, you know, so this job is a little bit boring now, you know, I wanted something. Uh, and, uh, and, and the question was that, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what, uh, what else can I do, right? But somehow along the line, I met Arthur Kamazi, who is the founder of Directive Communication Psychology. And that was his, you know, early days when he started off. I met him, uh, we discussed, he shared with me his, uh, his uh, you know, business plan. And he even tested me with the color brain and with the cards and all that, which I will talk about it later. I was so amazed. I was so amazed, right? And to cut the story short, I actually signed up his course. I completed his uh, certification. And uh, six months later, I actually resigned. I resigned from my job and I told myself that I want to do this. So that was me, right, uh, after 18 years of working, uh, that I uncover my talent, my so-called talent. I didn't know that that, you know, I, I also have, I didn't know that I have this area of talents, uh, by the way, yeah, right? But I was willing to go through, it was because I have high, challenge needs and i made it whatever that you are seeing me now it was like you know 18 uh already 15 years that i'm in this business so uh it is a product a process that i went through so my life changed after i discovered my color brain and my emotional needs right and of course right uh it took me a while to really understand so if i'm this color what happened how Right. And these are my needs. It's like, you know, again, how? So it was a time of reflection. Looking back, how I have, you know, do my things. There were times that I made mistakes. 
and all those. But one thing I was clear, I know where my talents are and, and my decision, right, made to resign. I can tell you so many people came and see me, you know, they thought I made a mistake. Yeah, but anyway, uh, looking back, this, it was not a mistake. My only uh, question was, why didn't I do it earlier? So that was my the other, right? right? But anyway, right, I, I, I'm very, uh, uh, at least what I say that I made my life change, right? After knowing, you know, who am I and what can I do better, right? Just to share a little bit, these are some of my, uh, some of my uh, activities and uh, uh, things that has happened, right? This was where I was awarded the best master trainer by Arthur Kamazi. Right, that was in 2018. At the point of time, it was no, there was no COVID yet. Uh, this year, 2020, uh, again, I was awarded, but this round, it was an online, right? So all I had was just the certificate being emailed it to me. That's all. <laughs> well, it was an announcement, and then I just got my certificate, right? So I can't have a picture like this with Arthur, yeah? Uh, this was a Global Leadership Awards uh, back in 2013. This was when I went to um, Qatar. This was in Qatar, right? A job that I had. This was when I was interviewed by NTV7, one of those uh, TV stations in Malaysia, right? And uh, this one, it was a radio interview, BFM interview, yeah? Okay. Uh, these are some of my workshops, my training, and this was done last year in Sudan. This was the furthest that I've been, my first time stepping into the Africa continent, yeah? And uh, this, was, uh, this was in Sudan, and at that time, right, uh, they have already opened up, it was just after the war, and uh, this was what we call, you know, the people who died, whom they fought for the war, so all their faces were drawn on the war. So they call it the independence war, something like that, yeah? just to give you an idea. And these are some of my training programs, uh, uh, some activities, and this is one batch that I've certified. This is another batch that I've certified. These are some of these you know, fun people that I'm with, and I truly enjoy and like what I'm doing now. Right, just to give you an overview, yeah? Uh, okay, before that, can I interrupt? Uh, we have uh, Roslyn. Can I just interrupt for a while? Uh, Rosalind? Okay, Rosalind, can, uh, we, I just saw that you joined about five minutes ago. Would you mind just to share a little bit, introduce yourself before I continue? Uh, sorry, I was late. I was out there, deliver, uh, had a delivery. But um, mm. yeah, I'm just curious about this subject and I'm um, dropping mm -hmm. by to see what this is all about because um, mm -hmm. I, I do manage a team and um, I, would, I would do like to bring, bring out the best in them. Okay, uh, Rosalind, can I know what do you do for a living? Um, I work with a government agency and um, leading in um, online courses for innovation and entrepreneurship at MAGIC in Sabajaya. Oh, okay, okay. So you are in charge of what? Doing online courses, is it? Uh, online courses and not just that. Basically, uh, fundamentally, um, content curation and also um, this uh, partnerships uh, with our ecosystem stakeholders. Okay, noted. Thank you very much, Rosalind. Uh, well, I've, we have uh, started, yeah, about 30 minutes already and I yeah. shared my personal story, yeah? yeah? Yes. Okay, let's move on. Anyone else uh, have anything to, to say or share first before we continue? Are we doing good so far? Are we doing good so far? Just give me a thumbs up if you're okay. Or just type yes in the text chat. Okay, I shall continue. Right, so after hearing my story, the question here is, if I can teach you on how to apply and get the best out of your team, would that be good? 
would you like to learn from me? So that would be the question, yeah? And uh, okay, just to talk a little bit about hiring, you know, the type of people that you have working. Uh, this will relate more to people like uh, Rosalind and Park because you are working uh, for someone, whereas uh, Cheryl, uh, sorry, and Shamini too, whereas Cheryl and uh, Anu, right? You are on your own. It doesn't matter because this will help you in understanding, uh, right? Now, if you agree with me, companies do spend lots of time and money in recruiting. Yeah, and you know, they, they, they would have their HR manager or they even have a recruitment manager and uh, some even paid the agency to do it. Now, the question here is, what happened if the person whom you have recruited, somehow they are not the best? But at the point of re uh, interviewing them, that was what you think they are, right? But when they join you, they are different. And, right, based on their CVs, they are uh, supposed to be performer or high performer, but somehow they underperform, right? So what are you going to do? The question, especially in Malaysia, well, I'm not sure about India or Australia, right, or even Vietnam, in Malaysia, we cannot simply fire people. The process to fire someone is very tedious and there's a lot of uh, legal, legal aspect to consider. So most companies, they end up just, you know, uh, just keep the staff and, you know, hopefully this person will just resign on his or her own. It would end up like that quite often. And I personally, when I was working for PwC, I have exactly the same experience. And at that point of time, I, I was not trained how to interview or how to recruit correctly, yeah, right? Uh, HR just recommend. And they gave me like five CVs to look at, right? And from there, I'm supposed to interview and I'm supposed to make decision whom, you know, do I want to recruit. Anyway, I recruited someone. But eventually, this guy was a pain in the neck. He is not a performer. He is just not the right person. You know, and, and we recruited is because we needed help. We needed more hands to help us to do work. But this guy was really giving me problems and problems and not helping me in my work. And yet, you know, I have added work to, to take care of him. So it was really very stressful for me, right? Uh, after talking to HR, you know, the, the suggestion is, you know, just help him, guide him, do whatever you can, and uh, hopefully he will resign. And this guy only resigned about a year later. So can you see the agony that I went through, right? Now, the cost of not hiring, no, the cost of hiring not the right person is costly. In the situation that I was in, I don't get the extra help. Money is already spent. My boss said that I can't get another person. So, so I was worse off, right? I have one pair of hands who was totally not useful. Yeah, and on top of that, I have to take care of him. So that gave me added work, added stress, and I really didn't know, you know, what else to do with him, right? And the process to recover the damage is even costlier. Yeah, so this is where, you know, we want to do it right if we can at the beginning so that you don't have to go through that agony, right? Now, those who are working in your team, uh, this will relate to people in like Rosalind, Pub, and uh, Shamini, yeah, right? Are they working to get salary only? Or are they working because they find meaning and passion through the work they are doing? Can I get some response from any of you? What do you think, your team? Can I get some response, please? Because this is a small group, I'd rather that we make it a little bit more interactive. Anyone at all? Salary. Anyone at all? Hello, who's that? Shamini, they are working for salary. Ah, right. If that's your answer, to me, it is very pathetic, right? People just come and uh, they, they give you their time in return for salary. And yet, you know, the meaning, you know, of the whole process is so much less. 
Now, what I want to say here is that uh, through DC, if you are certified, right, you can help and support to get these, you know, out in them and to find out in the correct way. Yeah, so this is what, you know, I, I hope, you know, that we, we can help more people to find their meaning in life, not just to get salary at the end of every month. Yeah, or at least they find their passion. Okay, and uh, have you uncovered their, their hidden talents and tap on it for the maximum benefits of the company? I can tell you, most bosses don't even know how to do it. They themselves are struggling and they themselves may also have this question, have they maximized their benefits, right? A lot of people don't know how, right? So this is where I would like to give you uh, tips, three tips and uh, what we can do. Number one is to understand the ambiguity relief process in your brain. Now, uh, this is part of the color brain, huh? right? What is ambiguity relief? The question here is, all of us, when you need to think, just like the computer, your laptop, when you press enter button, right? It will go through a process to get the answer for you, right? So when you need to think, when you need to do something, your brain will run in a few seconds, nanoseconds, right? And that process that your brain runs to get clarity, that is called the ambiguity relief process because you need to be clear. You need to get clarity out of it, right? So that process is called ambiguity relief process and the instrument to measure this process is called colored brain. Colored brain is the only instrument uh, that is created to uncover how you get clarity. And once you have clarity, right, you would have a preference, a way, you know, how you believe things should be done, right? So this whole thing is the uh, fundamentals of color brain. And through color brain, because this is who you are, that's your brain, huh? because this is who you are, right? You would have what we call your natural talents. And that's really your brain. And that is the best part of you, right? And no one is uh, born uh, perfect, right? You also have something that you are not so good at. So what are your gaps, right? And what are your potentials? Meaning that, you know, you, now that you know this is your type of color brain, then your gaps will be you have not go and unleash it, right? So this is where, you know, we will go through. Uh, you, will be, you will learn and you will be certified. Then you can help people. Yeah. And the next one is about the emotional needs. Now, based on Arthur Kamazi, there are eight emotional drivers inside us. Okay. We have four types of color brain and eight types of emotional drives, right? Now, all these eight resides in us. But first, you need to know what motivates you, what makes you happy, or what makes you not so happy, right? So these are the things that you need to know. And the people whom you are with, for example, your boss, what makes him happy also? He's also a human as you are, right? What are his emotional needs? Once you're able to interpret that, it becomes very powerful because you know how to come in. You know, you know where to pitch, right? And that's where what we call influence. You're able to influence people correctly. Yeah, so this is actually very powerful, okay? And of course, thirdly, the best of it is we, you, will, you will be equipped with what we call the emotional recipe. By using four color brain and eight emotional drives, you have a recipe on how to create the best team, the most appropriate team for a particular task that is required on the job. Why? Because there are two dimensions that we look at. Number one, the person's color brain. Number two, the person's emotional needs. The needs, the emotional needs is like, you know, do you match the team together? Right? Now, I go back to that question, you know, are you the same person at home and at work, right? Those of you who answered me know, it is because 
at work, you don't get your true emotional needs through work, but you force yourself to go into that situation. There's nothing wrong because that's how, you know, we have to do our work. You, you still need your salary. You need to do that. Yeah. You force yourself to go into that. I call it a temporary, uh, it's not fake, but you need to, you need to deliver, right? And, and once you are out, when you leave the office, you know, at 5 p.m., then you, you are not constrained anymore by that environment. So your mind, your emotions will just kind of like, you know, relax and you go back to the real you. So that's the difference, you know, right? Now, for those who answer me, yes, it is because, right, uh, your environment fulfill the emotional needs that you're looking for. So there's no need to fake. Yeah? And that's why you are the same person at home and at work. Okay? And let's go back to the other question. Why do some people who is supposed to be highly competent become underachievers? My answer is, it is not about their competency. It is about the wrong emotional recipe. Okay? It all depends, you know, uh, what kind of emotional needs this guy have. And somehow the environment that he's in does not match correctly to his personal emotional needs. That's why he's not able to bring himself up to the best of himself. Do you all understand? Are we doing well so far? Can I, can I you know, see a show of hands here? Are we doing well so far? Yes, no? Okay. Okay, Shamini, give me a yes here. Okay, okay. Fab said agree. Good. Good. So let's move on. Okay, so of course, right? I'm, I'm promoting, uh, right? How can you do that? Join this uh, practitioner professional certification program, right? And the crux of this course is how you get to learn the four tools. And these are the four tools that will equip you to interpret the colored brain plus the emotional needs. And what can you do to create the best emotional recipes. Yeah, so let me move on. Of course, what are the four tools? Number one, the colored brain communication inventory. This is our most popular tool that is in the market, right? And uh, in fact, colored brain, the name itself is even more popular than directive communication psychology. Yeah? Not many people understand what DC is, but people do know, you know about colored brain. So there are four colors for those of you who are already aware, right? There are four colors. The question is every color is different. And once you are certified, right? The, the, the key here is the skill that you get from me is that you will know how to interpret the, the graphs, right? How to interpret the graphs and how to uh, relate that you know, to that person so that you are able to explain. So this will be very useful to the coaches, especially if you are doing one-to-one. -one. There'll be lots of things that you can share and tell after knowing that, you know, who he is or she is, yeah, right? So this will be the colored brain. And uh, basically this uh, colored brain is available online. For those who are in Malaysia, only in Malaysia, right? We still have the hard copy version. And uh, it is available in bilingual for those in Malaysia, right? So in Malaysia, we have two choices depending on your needs, depending on your customers also. Some are still, you know, a bit uh, old style, traditional. Then you can uh, give them the, uh, the hard copy, yeah? right? Okay, let me continue. Then the next tool, and this is the most powerful and interesting tool, is the cards. We call it the Colored Brain Communication Cards. Yeah, uh, have, have you all seen the card? Yes, no? Have you all seen the card before, Shamini? Since you have signed up, and Cheryl? You know how to play the cards, Cheryl? No, I haven't seen the cards. Oh, you have not? 
How about Shamini? No. Ah, okay. Can you all see? I'm showing this in the video. Can you all see? This is the real cards, huh? Can you all see? Yep. Okay, it is a stack of cards which is full of pictures only. Okay, now the key point here is how do you interpret what people tell you when they select the cards? This is psychology and it is a very powerful interpretation, right? So this is the skill that to me, it is the most highly recommended skill and why, right? I'm, I'm you know, uh, people like to talk to me or, you know, after doing a class, for example, uh, I do a lot of in-house program for companies. I would have participants who just wait to come and talk to me because they want me to read their cards. It's not a tarot card, uh, by the way. <laughs> it's not a tarot card. I cannot tell your future. <laughs> but I can share with you the insights that I interpret. Yeah, a picture speaks a thousand words, right? So this is interpretation of your colored brain plus your emotional needs. That is the skill, right? And uh, to me, in DC, this is the most powerful one. If you can learn this, this is where, you know, my passion is to teach you guys, you know, so that you can do what I can do or what other commons you can do. And this is where I learned it from him. Are we okay? Yeah? Okay, let me continue. I'm going to go Here's and have a look at all my training to find it. <laughs> ah, uh, at this moment, this is Shara. Uh, um, we are in the process to develop the online version. Right? So soon you will get the online version. So, you know, nowadays because of the COVID and all that, we need to conduct training online. Uh, we will have that as a facility sooner. Yeah. But from now until then, it's still good to have the, uh, to me, you know, nothing, nothing is better than having a real card and seeing the person face to face because you are able to also observe the body language. The body language is equally important to interpret the overall, you know, subconscious of your participant. Yes, face expression, everything. So online has its advantages and also disadvantages. Yeah, now I'm someone who's a little bit old school. I still prefer the face to face. Uh, but now, anyway, right, it's also good now that I'm doing online. If not, I will not have this opportunity to talk to, you know, people from Australia, people from Vietnam and India. So this is also very amazing, right? It's awesome. Come, let's move on. Then the third tool that you learn is called World of Work Map. Now, this is a very awesome tool that is created by Arthur Kamazi too. And it is used as a metaphor. Okay, now if you look at it, right, these are uh, what we, it's called world of work. This is your world of work, huh? right? So what is, what is in the, your world of work, you have meeting land. That's where, you know, you have meetings, huh? right? Then you have land of solitude. Uh, that's where you, you know, when you're alone. When you're alone, it's like, what do you do, right? And then you also have team land. Team land is when you are working together with your teams. When you are with your team, right? How is it like? Con then you have continent of communication. Is this is when you need to communicate? Then you have fulfillment topia. This is your social aspect of the work, right? And also very importantly, this is the center here. It is called the uncharted waters. This is where the sea is. Now, for example, in the current COVID situation, all of us are going through uncharted waters because it's something new, something that has, uh, that we don't have any uh, reference, we don't really know what to do, how to do, and we are going through it, right? So all of us, right, are going through that. Uh, the rest of it, right, the beauty of it, for example, if you look at uh, meeting land, right, there's a positive, there's a negative, right? This is a positive, this is a negative. I will teach you how to use this uh, for, Various objectives. Number one, how to solve problem by yourself. Because a lot of us, when we face uh, problems, it could be you are here that got problem or here that got problem. This gives you clarity. 
and what sort of problem are you having? It gives you clarity. And all of us, right, we have our own world of work map. Your work map and my work map is different, although we are colleagues, although we are working for the same manager, right? It also reflects your work style. Everyone has different work style, you know? So that's where, you know, without knowing it, that's where conflict can happen. But once you use this map, it brings out the clarity. It helps you to visualize. Then you see, right, where is the problem, the root cause? And that's how we can solve it, you know, uh, uh, in, a, in a better way, yeah? So this work map is very, very useful. Uh, there is multiple usage. For example, just now I say that it can be your problem-solving map. It can also be used for discussion. It can also be used for brainstorming. Uh, I also teach people how to use this to interview candidates, to assess their work style. So it is multiple use. And for trainers, you also use this for uh, team building. We have the big version, the poster size version, so everybody can come together and have some discussion. You know, you give them a topic to discuss, I can tell you, you can take an hour or more just to discuss, you know. Everybody will have different problems in different areas, right? So this is one very, very powerful and important tool that can help you uh, you know, for the coaches, you can you can use use this for your for your can for your coaching, right? And people like uh, Pop and uh, Roslyn, and you know, you can use this in many ways, right? So this is one tool. And lastly, this is a bonus. This is a bonus, right? Uh, this is a what I call it uh, an assessment. This is available online. Uh, that is to measure perception gap. Yeah, uh, for example, if you look at this uh, diagram here, okay, this whole concept is based on your eight emotional drives needs. And what you do here is you answer it. If you are the person, right, you answer it yourself because what you think, you know, who you are may not be equally perceived by the people whom you are working with, right? For example, your boss may perceive you differently and your team members will perceive you differently, right? But do you know the perception gap or not? So this tool is to help you to uncover that and fill in the gaps. Once you know that, then you know how to you know, measure each other's expectation or where is the area uh, of, uh, of uh, improvement that needs to be done, yeah? So it's something like 360, but it measures the perception gap. Okay, so this is given as a bonus. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? No. Can you type yes or no? No? no. Okay, good, good. All right, so let's continue. Okay, so those are the four tools. And what do you get if you sign up, right? Of course, there's a certificate. This logo will be given to you, right? Now, the difference, for example, uh, Cheryl, you said that you have uh, bought the DC practitioner course. Uh, that one is a self-learn videos. Shamini, you also bought that, right? Uh, it's the same logo, but different color. And this one, we have this word professional in there, right? So this course is guided by me. It's not self-study. I will be here, we go through it. Yeah, so I have to ensure that, you know, you truly understand and you know how to apply. You know how to practice. Yeah, and uh, these are the manuals that you will be given. And uh, if you notice, right, this is Arthur Kamazi's style. He believed that learning should be fun. This whole textbook is in comic form, animation. So you are literally reading an animation book. <laughs> yeah, with content, huh? yeah. Okay, and of course, you also will be given the four tools, right? At least, you know, I mean, everyone will be given one set. 
And uh, of course, eventually later on, you, you want to buy, you will get a 10% uh, discount from the normal retail price, right? That is, uh, that is the privilege that you get. Okay. And uh, okay, I'm almost at the end. Yeah, I'm already at the end of my session. Now, before I go into this one, let's go back, you know, um, to some discussion here. What do you think? Do you think this is helpful? Anyone, can I get some feedback, please? Yes, it's helpful. Very helpful because uh, it's have a better understanding actually, what are we looking forward to this program? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, Shamini. Um, anyone else? Anu? Yeah, no doubt it is helpful. Like uh, you gave the example of, you know, uh, for company people best for team building and the other one was for with uh, interviewing skills. Now in mm. coaching also, I'm sure Shamini will also agree to this that Yes. <clears throat> for interviewing skills, this would help better because, you know, otherwise it's like going back and forth every time. I mean, for both the parties, the interviewer and the interview, it's better to have, if we are sorted right in the beginning, then your journey is, you know, I mean, it's clear, like, you don't need to go uh, give any second thoughts. You know where you are and the other person also knows, like, how it can help. Exactly, and, right? And truly, through the cards and through the map, you know so much more about the candidate that you are interviewing. Those that, you know, is beyond the series that they give it to you. Yes. Yeah, and I can assure you, right, when you make the decision, it's a much, much better decision. Whom you want to select. <laughs> Or you can recommend, yeah? If you're not in the, position, in the position, you can recommend, right? Because uh, you are a coach and all that, right? Yeah? Okay, other feedback, please? Uh, Cheryl? Wait, wait. I can't get my thing to work. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, so for me, I think the difference between the, the online and doing it face-to-face -face is a bit like you. I like that interactivity and I like to be able to talk through things and find out how things work and answer questions. So I think from that perspective, it seems really like really good, a really good option. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Rosalind and Pap. Um, yeah, yes, it's, it's very interesting. And uh, of course, it's very useful to know more about the people you are going to be working with or, uh, you know, having business with so it's something for us to look into okay good good and i think the last person is pop right uh pop any comment from you please oh, pop are you still there oh i think pop has left us okay well i don't see his name listed anymore Okay, anyway, um, I'm glad to hear this because I myself, you know, I've benefited so much. Um, and I, when I have so many people coming to see me and ask me, right, uh, how do I teach them and all that, right? That's where I came up with this, uh, with this course. Huh? Uh, this is very different from the online self-learn. Yeah, I told after that and he has agreed, right? That's where we came up with this program, huh? right? Of course, then, you know, tang, 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 right? What, you know, <laughs> all the logistics and all that, huh? right? Now, frankly, truly, uh, I'm actually, you know, um, still can't get over that I'm getting people from different parts of the world, right? When I plan it, I only thought of people in Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is a classroom uh, on this date. And uh, now, let's hear, right, if, you know, how many will want to sign up and I will make an online class. Can I, can I, you know, have some indication or show of hands or something like that? How many of you are really interested and you think that this is something that you want? 
then I will make an online class. For those who are in Malaysia, uh, Roslyn or Shamini, I don't know, right? If you can, you know, to me, it's always uh, uh, better to come for the classroom. Yeah. What's Any the difference feedback? between the professional and the one that we are doing now, actually? Just a bit of a difference. What is the difference, actually? As I said, right, uh, the one that you are doing, which is the video, is self learn Ah, okay, okay. So, the classroom is totally different. It's self learn That one, it covers uh, general, this video. Ah, okay, okay. All right. This one, I zoom into four tools. At the end, I ensure that you learn how to use the four tools from me. All right. Because currently, yeah, what we are doing through video is, is really a bit difficult to understand on certain things. You know, to have a better idea, I think the classroom is much more better. Yes. Uh, and this one is very specific. I ensure that at the end, your takeaways is how to uh, apply and practice the four tools. Whereas the video self-learn is the general, it's the whole DC, uh, DC concept. Now, the whole DC concept consists of uh, four books. And for this program, I only cover colored brain and emotional drive. That's all. That's my focus. The rest of it, I'm not, I, I'm not covering it. If you want to go into that, then you have to join the trainer certification. Mm. Yeah, that's the difference. Huh? Right? Uh, okay. Uh, so... I'm I'm interested, but uh, let's see the details. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm interested actually. Okay, what I will do here, let me give you the link to the registration form. You can mm -hmm. check out the details. Uh, just give me a sec. Okay, this is the link to the registration form. Uh, for those who are not from uh, in Malaysia, I, I have to apologize for the time being. This is only classroom available. That's why I would like to get your feedback. If you know, I can get four person. I'm going to have another session on Saturday. If I can get four person, I can organize an online class even. Right for Shamini, if you can, I would recommend highly recommend you do the classroom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, if not, uh, any other questions? I mean, I'm almost, I'm already at the end, right? So this is more an open discussion, Q&A, anything else that you need me to address? Uh, you're also doing the culture consultant program, right? Can I ask you anything about that? You can ask me, uh, but I don't really do it. Oh, okay, I'm certified, okay. but I don't, you know, uh, I can share what is it that you like to know. Okay, uh, actually I've completed my modules for culture consultant, but I'm having problem doing my homework, which is, I'm not sure exactly what am I supposed to do, uh, because they said you have to give some questions and you have to answer it and analyze it. Oh, so okay. I'm, so I'm really not sure... What am I supposed to do actually? Did you ask Arthur? I did ask, but uh, the, the, the question that I, the reply I got was, they said you got to ask questions to the organization as you are promoting to the organization and the, and the organizations are asking you questions about the program. So how do you respond to them? I think Sherlyn, I think you also have doing that, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how and, and I have this I have the same challenge. So I've actually gone back again after our conversation this morning. All right. really. Same thing, yeah. I'm having the same problem. Yeah. Okay. Because I wanna know what the like I wanna know what the difference is and where the gaps are and do I sign up and do this with you, Lily, and then able to um, do the DCI component and the coloured brain bit yeah. and then still have to finish stuff off with them and, and what is the what does that mean for the money that we've already paid for courses and I'm trying to get my head around how it all fits together and how we can utilize all of the things that we're doing. And the culture consultant is one of those things as well. It wasn't very clear on what the expectation was around the assessment or criteria. Yes, and exactly. Yeah. So if there was a, a coach or something, then that would make it much easier. We could go through that, do all of those and finish it. 
but if it's just one component of it, it sort of, you know, makes it a bit more um, sporadic, I guess, in terms of how we deliver the whole project. So. Okay. Uh, can I ask, right, this culture consulting course that you are doing, is it just solely on your own self-study or you all do have a uh, online live session with Arthur? Self-study. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's hundred percent self-study. Yes. Now, so you watch the videos and then finish the whole have... nine modules completed. Ah. Okay. Well, you think the okay. assessment? I'm having problem now. Yeah. Now, in general, in general, right at the beginning, uh, is this like you know? Uh, okay. What I do, I do give a list of questions to my client even before they start. Okay. Example, right? Yes, uh, maybe you can what, share with us, yeah. Yeah, what are your challenges currently? Mm. Right? And, you know, how do, what is your current uh, culture? They may have difficulty describing it, but you just say in general, you know, uh, as an outsider now, right? Uh, how can we understand, you know, uh, the, the behaviors of the people? Because uh, you may be dealing with HR people in this, in getting it. At least what we need is to have a, a you know, just a big, an overview, right? Right, to really give us an, uh, an idea where do we come from, right? I cannot be just, you know, open. <laughs> <laughs> right? I do need this kind of, at least we have that HR telling us. Now, whatever HR telling you or this person uh, uh, assigned to work with you, tell you, his perception may not be 100% accurate, but that is his perspective. Mm -hmm. You see, if you speak to the CEO, the CEO will tell you a totally different story. Yeah, so that's where, you know, if the story is different, it's good because that's where you and I got jobs to do. <laughs> right? That's where you and I got jobs to do, right? That's where, you know, I want to see, you know, right? Right? Each and everyone will have different level. They will see things differently. At least as an external coming in, right? At the beginning, I just want to grab a little bit like, what really that's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so these will be some of the questions that I will ask, right? And of course, you know, you need to ask, you know, uh, do you want to open up this to everybody or only you want to open up to certain people? Because at the end of the day, this uh, assessment tool, which is called Ocean, uh, um, it is done online. Yeah, it is done online. So, uh, you know, for a small company, it's fine. Hundred percent easily doable, right? What if you have a thousand people? That will be very challenging. So these are the questions that you need to know, mm. because the on the ocean tool that you uh, you need to uh, buy it, and you also need to prepare. You know, if you have to manage one thousand people online, is I can tell you, it's a hell of a job. <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> uh, it's not easy, you know, right? It's not, right? If it's 100, to me, it's doable. Yes. Yeah. So you need to find out all these questions. Okay, all right. Right? And of course, the other one is that, you know, uh, what, uh, what makes you, you know, uh, want to do this uh, culture assessment? Or why is it you think that you need it? Okay. Yeah, the, all this will be the opening questions lah, to go in. Lah. Mm. Right, and once you are in, and they allow you, and what then? Then you you will have more questions as you go along. Okay, so at least I have an understanding what exactly I'm supposed to do. Actually, all right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Thanks. Okay. Any other question? I'm fine to help you. Anyone? Any other questions? Mm, so far, I think that's well, on my side. So far, that's that's it. Okay. Okay. Um, Cheryl, yeah, are you okay, Cheryl? Any more questions from your side? Uh, no, I was just trying to open the link and get to the enrollment and the, the costing of doing the program with you for those separate components. And I'm just waiting back for Arthur's team to come back to see what, um, if they've got somebody that can help with the rest of it. <laughs> okay, good, good.
Okay. Uh, anu, any questions? No, uh, because like you said, uh, this is initially for the people who are who, who are there in Kuala Lumpur, like people <laughs> like Shamini. And um, I'm held up, I'm in India. So. No, no, that's, as I said, right, if you think you're you are really interested, do let me know. Yeah, I can yeah. open up an online course provided I get 4% at least, minimum. Okay. Uh, as an indication of the fee, mm -hmm. right, uh, at this moment, I'm still doing a, a, a special promotion. Uh, it will be it will be in the range of uh, 194 US dollars. Okay, 194. Sorry, 948. In in ringgit, it's much cheaper. Shamini, you pay in ringgit. <laughs> right, right. Uh, US dollars is 948. It will take uh, five sessions of two hours, at least. It may need more, but at least in my mind, it will take five sessions of two hours. And then plus the final assessment, that one, I have to do it on a one-to-one -one basis. Because I cannot be doing online and, and you know live with everybody at one go. That one, I have to arrange separately with everyone on an online basis. And uh, we have to figure out how to get it done. I'm being very honest with you at this moment, because it is still a challenge, but I believe it is doable is just that I need to plan. In the classroom uh, classes, are, is it continuously every day or how many days is the program actually? Uh, the phase, a uh, classroom is three days, Shamini. Continuously three days? Yes, October 16 to 18. Oh. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all right. Okay, so it falls. Yeah. And the last day is the assessment day. So within three days, you get everything done. Okay, all right. Yeah, so day one, day two is more of the content practice, you know, I, I ensure you, and then day three is the assessment. So once you pass everything, you are certified. Okay. And there will be a written test as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So these are the criteria, right? Right? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, right, Rosalyn, any, any questions from your side? Um, sorry, um, nothing much from me. I think that that's... Of course, uh, I mean, government agency, there's a lot of process for us to go through this. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, we'll, I can't decide now though. Um, but okay. the three things, is, is, is that all we need? Do, I mean, you did mention that we have to do five cycles of two days. Okay, or? I mean, for you, Rosalind, I would recommend you come to our classroom. If you yeah, can. Uh, five sessions, are, those are online. No. The three days is yeah. the, three days is the classroom. Three days is the classroom. Yeah, the online will be five sessions of two hours. Right. Okay. Right, and then plus an individual one-to-one -one assessment. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Clear. Good. Uh, I have put my email here, and I also put my contact number here. Uh, the contact is uh, for WhatsApp. I mean, we can do WhatsApp call. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we don't have any other questions, I think we can end the session. Anyone else? Anything? Last minute? Okay. Uh, thank if not, you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you it's really my pleasure, right? And thank you every, everyone for your time here and I hope to see you all. Yeah? Okay? You write to me. Yeah, okay. Okay, bye-bye.